I'm curious, when you hear the word cables, do you run for the hills or do you get excited? Well, after you've watched today's tutorial, I hope that if you're fearful of cables, you will now be excited about them. I wanna answer some of the most commonly asked questions about knitting cables, show you some very basic examples and how you can get started today to knit your very first cable. The first thing I wanna do is show you how to do a very basic cable twist. This is the fundamental of knitted cables and I want you to see it first so you know just how simple this concept is. After we have a look at the very basic principle and fundamental of knitting cables, I will spend some time answering some questions that come up. We're also gonna have a look at a few different types of cabled stitches. Now I personally use this book called 400 Knitting Stitches by Potter Craft. It's a complete dictionary of essential stitch patterns and I really recommend that you pick up a copy of this book. It's really great to practice some knit stitches, in particular, the cabled stitches. The instructions are really detailed. It tells you exactly what you need to do. And it also gives you diagrams so you can practice the written pattern as well as the charted pattern. Before we step into the studio, I wanna let you know that you can find all of the information that we're gonna talk about in this tutorial today over on my website. It's one of those great resources that you can bookmark, save for later, and refer to it anytime you're having trouble. So you can find that linked in the description below as well as right here on your screen. I also just wanna say a really quick thank you to my sponsor, Red Heart, for allowing me to teach you this technique today. I'll be using Red Heart Baby Hugs in the medium weight. It's a really great, versatile acrylic yarn that I use not only for baby projects, but for projects for myself because it's really soft, very easy to use and it's great for knitting cables because it has great stitch definition and it's easy to work with. All right, first up, let's see how to do a very basic cable twist. I'm working on a very simple six stitch cable. If you're working off of that book that I recommended before, 400 Knitting Stitches, you can find this pattern on page 49. It's a great one to start with. So I'm ready to work my cable row. I've already worked my first few stitches, which are really just my edge stitches, and I'm set up to begin cabling. The first thing I need to have is my cable needle. These come in various shapes and sizes. I find that this one works really well for me. And I need to twist this group. So it's a six stitch cable. So these six stitches are what's making up my cable and I need to twist them evenly. So I'm going to pull off the first three stitches and place them on my cable needle. And then I want to hold them to the front. And then all I need to do is knit those last three. So I'm essentially just working these stitches out of order. That's what creates the twist. So this is the easy part. I've worked the last three first and now I need to work those first three. What I like to do and why I like these, this particular cable needle is because I'm going to slide the stitches down to the end and I'm just gonna use the cable needle as a needle to knit with. So I'm just letting my other needle just kind of chill in the background there and then I'll knit them off the cable needle And that's all there is to it. I've completed the cable twist for this first section of the pattern. The one thing I wanna to bring to your attention is that when you're twisting these stitches like this, they're gonna feel a lot tighter on your needle. That's completely normal. And once you work this row, you'll kind of get through it. And when you start on the next row, that's when you'll really be able to settle things in and your stitches will be comfortable once again. Once you complete your cable row, your pattern is likely gonna have you follow up with a bunch of rows where you're not twisting anything. 
if we look at the work here, just this one row right here was a twist, this row was a twist, and this row was a twist, where I can really see that change in shape. And the other rows are really just maintaining my stitch pattern. So the cables are worked with knit stitches, the background is purl. So when I'm flipping my work over, I'm just knitting the knits and purling the purls. And that's pretty much the pattern, the consistency for a lot of cables. So we've already seen the physical act of doing a cable twist and that fundamental is all you need to know in order to do any type of cabled stitch. I really want to stress the importance that what makes a cable is the act of twisting your stitches. Now you can do this in any number or any repeat or any kind of fashion and that's really what develops a specific knitted cable but the principle is the same. Knitting cables only requires that you twist your stitches. Now, what does that mean exactly? That means that when you take a certain set of stitches that might be worked in a specific order and you change that order. So you might be taking three stitches and holding them aside, like we saw on that cable needle, and then working the other ones out of order. When you work your stitches out of order, that creates the twist. Now the stitch pattern has to do with where those twists are placed, how many twists are going to be there, how many stitches are involved, what the repeat is along the way. Really the sky is the limit. But I really just want to hit home with my main point right here, which is that if you understand and you know how to twist your stitches, then you can virtually create any knitted cable you want. You could even go as high as saying, I can design my own cables. How cool would that be? Now, I will be the first to admit that I lose track of repeats very often. I like to think that I can keep track of it in my head, but in all reality, a lot of times I get distracted and I know you do too. My big tip for you here is to work through some swatches first. Don't try to dive face first into a pattern because, well, learn from my mistakes. I tried to just work a cable knitted pattern right off the bat without having any practice on cables whatsoever because I thought, well, I can read a knitting pattern and I've been knitting for a while, I've got this, but I didn't. I failed miserably and that's just because I didn't have those basics. I didn't really understand the best way to keep track of my repeats and I abandoned ship. I wasted a lot of time on that project and I lost a lot of confidence throughout that process too and I don't want that to happen to you. So take my advice work through some swatches first. Even if you feel like you don't need to, just do it. After you've worked through several different swatches and you feel comfortable and confident, then I recommend that you proceed with a pattern, a previously written pattern, something that you're not going to try to design on your own. Or even taking those stitch patterns that are within those books that you are following for the swatches. At first, don't try to create your own pattern. I know as a designer, that's a hard thing to do but I recommend that you follow with a written pattern, one that's been pattern tested, so that you can continue to build upon that confidence that you need. After you've completed your first project following a pattern, you've worked several swatches, then you're really gonna have a good understanding of how cables come together, and then you can tackle designing something of your own. All right, now let's talk abbreviations. There are a few different ways that you'll see your cable abbreviated or spelled out in your pattern. And I wanna bring those different methods to your awareness now so you have a better chance of following that pattern as you go along. So the most common way that you'll see a cable indicated in your pattern is gonna be something like this. You'll see C, some kind of number, and then F or B. Now let's break this down. The C stands for cable. Very simple. There's really nothing that we have to do here. We can just completely ignore this, this letter. The number is going to be the number of stitches within that cable. So you might see four if it's a four stitch cable, six if it's a six stitch cable, eight, 10, 12, really the sky is the limit. It can be any number, but just know that that is the number of stitches that is within your cable. Now, F and B, 
F stands for front and B stands for back. And what those two things tell you is where you're going to pull your stitches when you're working them onto your cable needle. So let's say, for example, you're working a six stitch cable and your instructions say C6F. Well, what that means is when you pull the first three stitches off of your, your needle and then place them onto your cable needle, what you'll do is you'll pull that cable needle to the front of your work. On the flip side, if you have C6B, then you're going to pull the stitches off of your knitting needle onto your cable needle, and then you're gonna pull that to the back of the work. Now there's something really interesting you should know about front and back. So when your pattern tells you that you're going to cable to the front, that is going to be a left-leaning cable. When your pattern tells you to pull to the back, just know that that is a right-leaning cable. And it's cool because when you know these things, you can play with your own designs if you prefer, but it's also a nice visual cue for you. If you know that your cable is supposed to lean to the left, then you'll, you'll always know that you just need to pull your cable needle to the front and you don't really have to refer to your instructions all the time. So this formula right here is the most common way that you'll see a cable spelled out in your pattern. But sometimes you'll come across a pattern that will spell it out even more for you. So you might actually see it say cable six front. And in that case, you literally just have to do that. Now, sometimes it'll take it a step further and it'll say K3 comma K3 in parentheses. And that's just so you know that all of the stitches within that cable are going to be knitted. There are some patterns where you might be working with a different stitch. So for example, instead of having a, an all stockinette cable, you might have part of it be stockinette and part of it might be seed stitch or garter stitch or something like that. But most commonly, this is what you're going to see. The other thing I like that that book does is it takes this sentence one step further. So you'll see this instruction, cable six front, it'll give you the knit three, knit three if that's the, the pattern that you're working on, but then it'll also open up another parentheses and it'll spell it out even more. So it will say, pull three stitches from your left needle, place it on your cable needle, pull that to the front of the work, knit three, and then knit the three from your cable needle. For me as a beginner, that sentence was what I focused on first because it told me step by step what I needed to do. Then once I got comfortable with that, then I was able to kind of follow along with this method, cable six front. Okay, I get the idea, I can do that. And then I kind of went to this format here where I was comfortable seeing C number front or back. I knew what to do at that point. So that book once again is 400 knitting stitches. It has, well, 400 knitting stitches, but it does have several cable stitches in it as well. And I do think it's a great tool for learning some cables. Sometimes you're not always going to have just the written word. You may only have a diagram available to work off of. So what I've done here is I have drawn a six stitch cable in, in my editing software here, just so you could see an idea of what a cable diagram looks like. A couple things I want to clarify for you so you can actually understand what you're seeing here on your screen is the, the key, right? So the lines, the vertical line, that is going to be to knit on the right side of the work. And when you see a horizontal line, that is going to be a purl on the right side of the work. So that's what we're seeing here. We see a bunch of knits and we see a bunch of pearls. So these are all pearls. These are all knits for the most part, except this row right here. This one stands out to us because this is your cable twist. And believe it or not, this one single row basically makes your entire pattern, your entire stitch pattern. So you only have to twist just once out of all of these rows. Another thing I wanna point out is that in the cross here, we can see that three of the lines are on top of the other three, and that it's leaning to the left. So again, this is that example where we're cabling six front, 
and that's going to give us that left lean. A good diagram is going to do this for you so that you don't even have to look at written instructions, that you can just look at the diagram and know exactly what to do. A lot of times what I'll do if I'm following along with a diagram is I ignore most of what you see here. And that's not to say that I just kind of do my own thing, but I think a lot of the information within this diagram is something that you can learn relatively quickly. So for me, the, the first thing that I focus in on is how many rows are in my repeat. So if we count these out, one, two, three, and a lot of times this is gonna be given to you so you don't even have to do this, but I can see that I have an eight row repeat. And on row number seven, I'm gonna do my twist. That's important thing number one. The next thing I need to consider is if I'm working this as a row or if I'm working it in the round, because that's going to determine how you read your diagram. If you're working in rows, you're gonna follow a similar pattern where you're going down the row. Let's change the color here. You're gonna start at one point. You're gonna work in one way. Then you're gonna go up, work back, and then follow that trend. Well, let's say that you're working in the round. In that case, you might start at the same point down here, but you're always gonna be going in the same direction. And that's important because when we're knitting in the round, we're always looking at the right side of the work, right? We're not flipping it back and forth. And so that's going to change what stitches that we work. So for example, my first three stitches are gonna be pearls right here. So I'm gonna purl three and then I'm going to knit six. Well then if I'm working in a flat row, I'm gonna flip my work and then all of my knits become pearls and my pearls become knits. And I'm probably going into a little bit more detail than you probably need, but making this association is, is when you're gonna have that aha moment, that when you flip your work, knits become pearls, pearls become knits. Now, in the case of working in the round, and the point that I'm really trying to make here is that when you start on your next repeat, you're going to purl the pearls, knit the knits. That is the most important piece of information I can give you here. In most cases, you're going to knit the knits and you're going to purl the pearls. When you realize this, most of the information on this diagram is gonna be completely irrelevant. The main thing that you'll wanna focus in on is the cable twist, where it occurs, and which direction it leans. Now the big question here is, how on earth do I knit cables in the round? Whether it be on double pointed needles or on circular needles, the physical act, let's go back to the fundamentals here, is going to be the same. We're gonna use a cable needle and we're going to twist those stitches and that's how we're gonna create the cable. Now let's look at a quick example of a hat that I'm working up now with some cables so I can show you just how simple it is to knit cables in the round. The first twist, we're gonna gather two stitches on our cable needle. I'm pulling it to the front and then I'm gonna knit the next two. So this is an eight stitch repeat. I've essentially split it in half, well the pattern split it in half, and I'm cabling four on each side. So I'm basically just working two cable twists the same way as before. I've collected them on my cable needle and I'm working them out of order. Now this pattern also requires that I cable four to the back. So I'm gonna grab the next two. Pull my cable needle to the back so I can work the next two. My goal here really isn't to teach you this stitch pattern, my goal is to show you that we're not doing anything different while we're cabling in the round. So I'm working on circular needles here, 
because that's what I prefer to work off of. But the concept is the same if you're working on double pointed needles as well. All right, we have covered a lot of ground so far. I wanna commend you for making it through to where we are in the tutorial now, but I don't want you to abandon ship just yet. I know you're excited to dive in and try your first cables, but before we do, we need to talk about the all important troubleshooting. My biggest problem with knitting when I first started was that I didn't know how to fix my mistakes. And that actually steered me away from knitting for like two years. I was terrified because I knew I was gonna be investing a lot of time into something that I didn't know how to fix if I made a mistake and the perfectionist in me didn't allow me to just leave it be. I don't want that to happen to you. So you need to understand how to fix your mistakes so that you can continue in the forward direction rather than kind of taking one step forward to three steps back. So first up on the troubleshooting agenda, I want to talk about holes in your work. This is a very common problem. You're probably going to experience it. And I want you to know right off the bat that it's nothing you're doing wrong. If I pull my work down and stretch my stitches out a little bit, you can see a couple of holes that have formed as a result of twisting those stitches. And I wanna let you know that is completely normal. It's actually more pronounced when it's on your needle than when it's off your needle. So if I flip the work over and I'm looking at the front now, I know that there is a hole that exists right under this cable, so big that I can fit my finger through it. You can't see that, right? Now, if you find that you can see some holes anywhere within your work, if you kind of block it out a little bit like this, one thing you can do to try to eliminate that is make sure that you have a little bit of extra tension or you're holding your working yarn a little bit tighter than you normally would when you're working those twists. Another potential issue you might run into is with loose stitches. This is another one of those scenarios where tension is going to be your best friend or your worst nightmare. So you really need to work really hard to get your tension consistent and learn that as you're cabling, you have to tighten it up just a little bit in order to kind of avoid having those loose stitches. Now, what do you do if you have to, heaven forbid, tink or rip out your cabled stitches? I do want to stress that if you can avoid this, do, because it's not always easy, but it is very possible. Let's have a look at how we can reverse knit or tink a very simple cable. The most important thing you need to remember is the order in which you worked the stitches, because remember we twisted them. So this first three that I can see on my needle here is going to be behind the next three. So I wanna look at my first stitch and find the right loop to tink. Catch my needle in that loop, slide it off my needle and pull my working yarn. So I've just undid one of those stitches. Now I'm looking at my next stitch here. I wanna capture that loop Pull it through and I know I have one more to work. I find that it's easier if I keep some tension on the working yarn. I can really see that loop that I'm trying to get my needle into. Slide it off the needle. And then place these three on my cable needle because again, I know that there's a twist here, so these are out of order. I still have three more stitches to tink, but this time they're in the correct order. You can always do a little self check here too. look at your work and make sure that it's not twisted. So you can get an idea of where you are within the pattern. And then I'm simply going to replace 
these stitches on my needle from my cable needle. I also really hate giving this advice here, but it really is true. Practice doesn't always make perfect, but practice does make better. I hate that advice because I feel like we hear it so much, we kind of gloss over when we hear it, but in the case of knitting and crochet, practice really does work. If you would like a full detailed list, something that you can read and bookmark and save for later, go ahead and check out my website. You can find all of the information we covered here in today's tutorial right there on my website. Once again, you can find that link in the video description below, as well as right here on your screen. You can also find the information about Red Heart Baby Hugs right there on that page. This is one of those yarns that is kind of a go-to for me. I don't necessarily always use it for baby projects, although it's great for that. It's incredibly soft, but I like making projects for myself with Baby Hugs. It comes in a medium weight as well as a lightweight version, and you can find the information and where to order directly from Red Heart on that page. Now, my question for you today is as it was at the beginning of this tutorial. Answer in the comments below, does the idea of cables completely scare you to death or does it make you excited? And has this video helped you make that transformation maybe from fearful to excited? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the Be Hooked YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And I look forward to serving you in the next tutorial.